Abiotic Factor is a cooperative survival crafting game set in a massive underground research facility. It combines base building, exploration and classic Half-Life style environments with retro sci-fi atmosphere. The game initially spent time in early access and has only recently reached its full release. At first glance, the visuals might look simple, almost like a throwback to the late 90s shooters. But under the hood it's running on Unreal Engine 5. That means it uses modern rendering systems like Lumen, Global Illumination for lighting, and it simulates a lot of complex interactions at the same time. The result is that the game is much more CPU heavy than you'd expect, and even the developers highlight that in the system requirements. So while it might look old school, you still want to make a few adjustments in order to get better performance. So to get a rough idea of performance, it's always helpful to start with a direct comparison of the four graphic presets in DirectX 12 mode. This shows the potential improvements before diving into individual settings. Interestingly, GPU usage actually drops as we increase the presets. Higher settings shift more work onto the CPU, which proves that just cranking settings doesn't always give better performance in CPU limited scenarios. Many options, like lighting and world interactions, are CPU heavy, so even though the visuals get fancier, your CPU can become the bottleneck and lower frame rates. Next up is the DirectX 11 graphics preset comparison, and here we notice the opposite behavior. GPU usage rises as we increase the settings. But since we're so CPU limited, it doesn't actually improve frame rates. Performance in DX11 is extremely poor, especially on modern hardware, so I do not recommend using it. The option exists mainly for lower end PCs. I even tested the adjusted DX11 pipeline with DX Navi changes on my AMD RDNA 2 card, but unfortunately it made no difference. Next up is the CPU setting. According to the in-game description, which by the way is really well done with clear explanations and even in-game captures, this adjusts how aggressive CPU-based gameplay optimizations are applied. The tooltip mentions it could affect things like character movement, hitching, or other visual defects. In my testing though, I couldn't see any noticeable difference, either visually or in performance, when switching between low and epic. It's possible this setting has more impact on NPC behavior or in online sessions with multiple players, which I didn't test here, but for single player gameplay it doesn't seem to change much. Next up is the view distance. In terms of performance, there's virtually no change from low all the way up to epic. However, there are some visual differences. For example, the ceiling light bars only start appearing at longer ranges once you hit medium and above. So this setting mainly affects how far away small scene details are rendered, but it doesn't really impact frame rate. Next is post processing, which mainly ties into bloom, but also affects things like refraction and particle quality. Performance wise, the impact is almost non-existent due to the CPU limitation. Even on Epic, frame rate only dropped from 87 to 85 frames per second. That's about a 2.3% decrease. Normally shadows are one of the heavier settings in most games, but here they barely affect performance. GPU usage goes up by about 4-5%, yet frame rates stay nearly the same due to the CPU limitation. Visually, the real change starts at high, where you can see much more detailed shadow edges and definition. Alright, so textures are a tricky one in Abiotic Factor. With the blocky retro aesthetic, the difference between low and epic is almost impossible to notice. Honestly, I had to really stare at it. Looking at VRAM usage, there's practically no change either, which confirms that the setting makes little to no real difference. Next up is effects, which should adjust the quality of particles and other small details. I honestly couldn't find much of a difference. Maybe it also touches fog, but I didn't test that specifically. Either way, the impact is tiny and in my testing there was no performance loss at all when running it on Epic. Foliage is a funny one because the game says it adjusts the detail of grass and plants, which is hard to test in an underground facility. I even went to the first portal area with its No Man's Sky style world and honestly I couldn't see any difference from the setting at all. At least in that spot it doesn't seem to have any effect. Now let's get to the juicy bits. Global Illumination. 
This is one of the few settings that delivers a dramatic visual impact and performance hit. It's powered by Lumen GI, Unreal Engine 5's real-time lighting system. In my testing, disabling GI plunges the game into near darkness. That's because light bounce is gone, so I only recommend turning it off when frame rates are critically low. Even then, boosting gamma can claw back some visibility. Medium already reintroduces most of the lighting magic, and going to Epic doesn't yield much extra. The visuals don't improve enough to justify the performance cost. The one thing Epic adds, however, seems to be a more detailed ambient shadowing in crevices, though that might still fall under Lumen rather than a true ambient occlusion pass. According to general documentation and community feedback, Lumen is extremely CPU heavy, thanks to its reliance on surface cache, software ray tracing, and bounce lighting, all managed on the CPU, even when GPU based features are available. So in this game CPU bound situations, cranking GI to Epic is mostly wasted. Next is Reflections. In Abiotic Factor, anything above low mainly improves the detail and distance of reflections. The performance cost is moderate, going from 85 down to 80 FPS, which is about a 6% drop. Visually though, the difference is massive. Reflections add that polished almost RTX demo style to the retro art direction and really elevate the look of the game. I recommend keeping this on high for a good balance, and if you've got a stronger GPU, you can comfortably push it to Epic. Reflections also affect mirror quality. On low, reflections don't function at all. Floors just use a matte shader. While Lumen includes reflections alongside GI, they're software based here and not on par with true ray trace reflections. Even on Epic, mirrors look screen space dependent. Characters are barely visible depending on the angle. In co-op, reflections show a bit more detail on other players, but nothing impressive. Performance however takes a big hit in mirrors too, with low to epic dropping by 33%. Overall I recommend the high setting, it looks the same as epic but performs much better. Bloom can be set individually even though it's tied to post processing. It adds that glowing light effect around bright sources giving the image more punch. Performance doesn't really change, going from low to higher settings only costs about 2.5% with no difference beyond medium. Next up is anti-aliasing quality, which in this case uses FXAA. With AA off, the staircase effect on edges is very noticeable, for example on the high table here. Even low already reduces it quite a bit. Interestingly, going from medium to high looks more like a downgrade, while Epic mainly softens edge darkness a little further. My recommendation here is, use high if you want to squeeze out frames, and Epic if you've got performance to spare. Last up are the different AA types. We have MSAA, FXAA, TAA, and TSR. They pretty much rank in that order with TSR being the most demanding, since unlike the others it actually uses an upscaling technique that costs a lot of performance. That also makes it a bit odd that TSR is the default option. In my testing on Epic settings, MSAA through TAA performs similarly, but TSR stands out with a 32% performance drop. My recommendation, pick whichever works best for you, but personally I find TAA gives the best balance of image quality and performance. So here are my recommended settings. If you ever need just a little extra performance, focus on tweeting the big three. Global illumination, AA quality, and reflections. 
pretty much everything else barely makes a difference in frames. I hope this guide helped you get the most out of Abiotic Factor. If it did, a like would be awesome and drop a comment on which game I should cover next. See you guys in the next one. Peace.